My name is Dan Schulte. I am a partner at Kerr, Russell & Weber in Detroit. We are general counsel to the Michigan Dental Association. And today I'm going to answer a question about the bad side of social media and how it's proper to respond to a negative posting. The following question is a sign of the times and highlights how social media can be used against you. A dentist writes the following. A patient of mine recently started a Facebook page critical of me. Specifically, I stated, it stated that I inadequately sedated her when extracting a tooth. It goes on to describe me as a gruff dentist that does not care about the comfort of my patients. No one reading this would want to be my patient, nor would any dentist reading this want to refer patients to me. This posting is a gross misrepresentation of the facts. I would like to respond in kind with a posting of my own letting readers know the following. This patient never complained about the extraction to me personally. She does not have dental insurance and is really upset due to my insistence that she pay my usual charges for the extraction prior to performing additional needed dental work and that the extraction of the tooth and the other needed dental work is the result of her very poor dental hygiene. I have heard stories of other dentists responding with the facts and getting into trouble for doing so. Is this true? Why can I not respond with the truth and clear my name? As difficult as this may be for dentists, physicians, and other healthcare professionals to accept, the unfortunate answer is that it would be illegal for you to respond using any information contained in the patient's record. HIPAA allows you to use patient information only for treatment, payment, and healthcare operations purposes unless you have obtained an authorization from the patient allowing your use of the information for some other purpose. It is doubtful in the situation described that this patient is going to give you an authorization to use her patient record to refute what she has posted online, so you cannot you legally use the information for this purpose. The same was true prior to the enactment of HIPAA. Back then, Michigan's dentist patient privilege statute would have led to the same result that being that a dentist cannot use any of the information acquired in the course of the dentist-patient relationship for purposes other than treatment, payment, or as otherwise allowed by the patient or the statute. Using the information to respond to an adverse online posting would not have been permitted. MDs, DOs, and other healthcare professionals are also subject to HIPAA and face the same restrictions when confronted with the situation you describe. It is unfortunate that the internet has made it so easy for people to broadcast misinformation that can harm your reputation, and that the inter internet is for the most part unregulated, providing no recourse for those wronged by this conduct. Non-healthcare professionals who are subject to privilege statutes, like attorneys and accountants, are in the same situation. To make matters worse, legal recourse in these situations, in most cases, is not possible. First, you have the problem of proving who posted the false information. Most online postings are anonymous. Second, you will very likely have a difficult time proving the statements are factual versus statements of opinion about the treatment that you've provided. A statements of opinion are not actionable. Third, even if you can prove who made the posting and that the statements are factual, you still have to prove your damages. That is, the false posting directly caused you to lose patients and how many, how much profit per patient was lost, etc. This is very difficult to establish. This is a frustrating situation to be in with no satisfactory way to respond using patient records. The best advice is not to respond to negative postings like this. Instead, manage your online reputation through your own Facebook page, website, and other facets of your online presence. 
consider asking patients to provide online testimonials praising the care that you have provided to them. Most consumers will believe the majority of the opinions they read and disregard the minority. This appears to be the best practice in this situation. Whatever you do, however, do not disclose any patient information without first getting a signed authorization from the patient. This will only make an already troubling situation worse.